What's up, everyone? Bashar Ketu here with the Impact Hour podcast, uh, coming to you live with Aaron Shevetarese. Hopefully, did not butcher your last name, my friend. How are you? Hey, man, we're good. How you doing, bud? Good, man, good. Uh, so last uh, episode, we uh, uh, we finally came with uh, came up with a name, and thank you very much for everyone uh, that uh, suggested all the awesome names for us. Uh, you know, we, we announced the winner in the last episode. Well, that's, that's something that we're trying new, and, and, you know, we'll try it for the next couple episodes and see, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully you guys like it, which is just simply answering your questions. And this is just a way for us to give back to you, add value, and also create, you know, content for, for what we're providing. So if you have any questions that you want us to answer, drop them below. Uh, we'll simply just grab, you know, five, seven, eight questions every episode. We'll answer them, have a, a cool conversation. And hope you guys enjoy it and come with us uh, on the ride. So, Aaron, man, what's happening? How are you today? Man, I'm great. It's awesome. A little winning Wednesday for the BJK company meeting today. Lots of good vibes in there. Yeah. Jumping on a podcast with you. It's a great day, man. I did some shopping this morning, bought some trees. <laughs> That's some tree. I could see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, so something that I've been, you know, we've been seeing in the comments for a while. And, um, and I've stayed away from this. I, I don't like controversy at all. Um, you know, as uh, last episode, we kind of got into uh, politics a little bit and Trump and all that stuff, which was un un very uncomfortable for me. Lightly, just a little yeah. bit. <laughs> just a little, little bit. bit. The top. Just a little bit. But there is a very controversial figure. And uh, if you're listening, you probably already know who we're we're about to talk about. This is someone that's that's made a, a name for himself over the last, I think, seven, eight, 12 months. And, uh, and his name kept on coming up in the comments, people asking us about like, what do you think of this person? What are your thoughts, you know, of their message, of of what's happening with them and stuff like that? And, you know, I, I try to stay away, but let's just address it. Let's maybe spend the next five, ten minutes addressing it and, and answering some a couple of questions that I got here. I see that I have one, two, three specific questions. So why don't you first tell me what do you think of Andrew Tate? What do you think of oh, his oh, message? Here we, <laughs> here we go. Here we go. <laughs> all right, let me let me get in my Tate stance Wait, that all fourteen year olds. I don't have my, let me take off my shirt. Hang on. Take <laughs> off my shirt. Let me get in the stance of all fourteen year old males in the United States. And embody my cobra. Yeah. So Andrew Tate, man, the guy. Regardless of what people think of Andrew Tate, you can't deny the fact that he creates a fucking movement. He knows how to motivate and inspire a certain demographic. Mm. Right. He comes from the. Uh, male energy sort of dating sphere online from back in the day. He's nothing new, but he's transferred that into the new affiliate marketing model. And the way he did it was genius, right? Mm. Now you could agree or disagree with a lot of his, his messaging around women and things. There's a lot of misogyny in there, yes, but there's also a ton of validity when it comes to depression, <laughs> activity, yeah. working out, motivation, all that stuff I feel is on point. I feel he has some good, some bad. Um, it's an interesting character to say the least. Yeah, see, the thing that, um, like, I, I think the first time I heard about Andrew Tate, um, it was probably about maybe five months ago, six months ago, or something like that. And we were hanging out with Mitch and Quasi and all these guys here in Miami. Um, yeah. And we went to, I think we were at Top Golf or something like that. And they said, hey, man, you should look into this guy, Andrew Tate, because he's kind of has a university, just like how you're trying to grow BJK University. And I'm like, who's this guy? He's, they're like, you know, he's grown this thing and he's got a great following. And uh, you should look at what he does because inside of his university, um, he has like, you know, he, he offers multiple things and he, you know, it's nothing like what we offer because it's kind of like a dummy down version to what we offer. Yeah. Uh, but he's, I think he's done an incredible job. And so I started looking into his content and I just started seeing all the content online. I'm like, that's odd. What the fuck? That, that's a weird way of, of doing content, you know? Yeah. And um and then I I went home and I'm like, "Hey babe, have you heard of this guy Andrew Tate?" And my wife just fucking went off, "Fuck this guy. I hate this guy, blah blah blah." And I'm like, "That's interesting." I'm like, "Why do you think that?" She's like, "Well, he's he talks shit about women." I'm like, "Okay. Have you listened into like a full 1-hour episode of a podcast or something?" He said, "It's like, no, no, I just see like my friends send me stuff." I'm like, "That's interesting." And what that kind of triggered in my mind is Unfortunately, this is how like we create our own opinions about things or about people or about personalities or whatever. We take sound bites, 20, 30, 50, 60 seconds of something that's completely blown out of context. 
that triggers something inside of us and then we start sharing it amongst people and then because we have so much input in our lives that forms our opinions about people and i think this is where like again controversial we'll we'll, we'll get out of controversy here in just a couple minutes but like fuck that i'm taking it down some rabbit hole here in a minute the <laughs> okay, more than our dad is coming. It's gonna oh go fucking God. wild. Holy shit. Right. I'll play we'll that. On. Hold on. <laughs> I gotta catch a plane, bro. So I hope my fucking plane doesn't doesn't catch on fire here in a few we'll hours. See. Um. So, like, if you're a Democrat and 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 you're a diehard left, you know, Democrat, great, awesome. Uh-huh. But I think the big majority of Democrats have have probably kind of woken up to the fact that they've kind of made a mistake this time around. They're like, I don't know, man. I'd have to say I mean, so. nothing, nothing towards him, but it's like, have you watched 60 seconds of Joe Biden? It's like, does he even know where the fuck he is? Yeah, no. Half of the time. You know it what I mean? It confirms the puppet master theory. We can go there some other time, but it confirms it. Right. But the reason why a lot of people voted, I feel like, is because they got fed with short form content yeah. because the internet has so much flood of content and stuff like that. And they got just fed with all this stuff. And then now that helped formulate their opinions about people. I like this guy. I don't like this guy. I hate this guy. I, I, I dislike this guy. And it's based on like very little context and very little information. And I think we're all, not I think, I truly believe that we're all intelligent human beings. And we all like, are, you know, I'm learning more and more about the human biology and the human brain. And man, is it fucking complex. And it's like God has put all these things, whatever you believe in God, science, whatever you believe in, has put this like huge, incredible thing here, like yeah. use it to your advantage. And I think we just need to stop being followers uh. and going into that leader mentality. And that's another question that I have here, actually, that I saw that we yeah. will go into right after this is what does it mean to be a leader? But before we go there, I just want to kind of keep it a little bit here because I do have a couple more questions about Andrew Tate. Um, Here's something, here's something. You're talking about people and being followers. And listen, if you're at home right now and you think Andrew Tate is one way or the other way, I don't give a fuck either side. He's a misogynist asshole. He's the worst fucking guy in the world. He's such a prick. Or the dude's a G. I want to be like him. I also want to fuck a Bugatti. Whatever side of camp you're on, it's the same as Biden, Trump. Whatever side of camp you're on, Welcome to your echo chamber. You're living in an echo chamber online that's feeding you what you believe to be right. Mm. Right? So if you surround yourself with people who think he's a top G, he's the man, he's a fucking stud, the next guy says that, the next guy says that, the next reel says that, you're like, dude, the guy's a stud. If you're sitting at some feminist group and they're sitting there being like, this misogynist asshole, what a prick, the next girl's like, yeah, he's such a fucker, all of them are going to say the same thing. Yes. It's an echo chamber and the internet will create these little core hordes of echo chambers in groups and, and pages and things you follow. And you have to wake the fuck up and understand that none of it is real. And you need to divide down the center and look at both sides and make your own informed decision, which people don't fucking do anymore. Yeah. And, and one thing about social media, like I love the internet. I love social media, but it's like, have like literally right now, I'll fucking speak into my phone something and I'll start getting targeted about all these ads about that one thing for the next fu- yeah. until I fucking die. In percent you know? off. Exactly, right? So it's like it's like if you're as you said this echo chamber that we live in it's like if you watch one thing you're going to keep getting fed of that same thing over and over so in your mind as you said it's like yeah well this this absolutely is fucking true. Yeah. Mm, you you, you accept it for truth. Yes. If you find yourself in an echo chamber whether that's political, science, uh fucking Uh, religious ideas. It doesn't matter what topic we want to use here. If you find yourself inside an echo chamber, you're just going to get fed more of what you think is true. Right. It's going to confirm deeper your belief in it. This is why when people, they get fed something that's like such bullshit, they believe it to be true to the point that even when it's proven wrong, they don't believe it. Right? We could go down a wormhole on fucking COVID and shit. It's like, hey, by the way, and they're like, no, I've been believing this shit for too long now. Yep. It's got to be real. Like, yep. it's got to be true or whatever your thoughts are around that shit. It's totally different. But with Andrew Tate, man, the thing about this guy, he's created a mass following and he's created echo chambers using other people. Mm. You want to talk a bit about that? Yeah, let's go into it. Because, the, the I mean, I have a couple other questions uh, about Andrew Tate here in the yeah. comments that we got. But yeah, go ahead. Why don't you go into that? 
So, <clears throat> so Andrew Tate creates his own echo chambers by getting people to come to his affiliate program and they chop up his own content and he has a step-by-step -step course inside his course that right. teaches you how to get the most controversial pieces out, post them into reels and into TikToks, and it literally teaches you how to create a war in the comment section so there's a ton of engagement. He taught hundreds of thousands of people how to do that with his controversial content. That is fucking genius. That's why he up everywhere. And that's why when he's been in jail for the last four months or whatever the fuck, he's still everywhere. You can't go on Instagram, TikTok. You can't go anywhere without seeing something Andrew Tate. The guy's been in a fucking jail cell for half a year. He's not making content. He's got a beard. He doesn't look the same. He's a different dude. Still fucking everywhere because he created an army of people who live inside his echo chamber. To the point where he created his own system that he controls. He's not on a, a Kajabi or a, another uh, platform. He has his own fucking platform similar to Discord. He created that so that no one can come in and infiltrate. It's smart as fuck. Misogynist or not, he's smart as fuck when it comes to business and creating an online presence. Yeah, and one thing that I um, I saw, so I was uh, looking up something um, couple, last week, I think it was, and um, on uh, in 2022... He was the second or the third most researched name in the world Crazy. in a fucking year. And he only, like, people just, just I mean, I just found out about him a few months ago. Uh, but one thing I want to point out here, you said, regardless of what opinions he has about women, he's smart in business. Yeah. And I think this is very important for everyone watching today, is... Regardless if you agree or disagree with someone's worldview or whatever, if you're able to divide things in boxes and put them in containers, you can learn so much from everyone. I don't have to 100% agree with you and like you and, and fall in love with you for me to, in order for me to learn sales from you, right? Uh I don't need to agree with... Uh, 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 with how Tony Robbins runs his life or his marriage or whatever, 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 in order for me to learn from him how to find fulfillment in life. I don't need to, you know, 100% agree with Michael Jackson and what the fuck he did in the last few years for me to say, oh, fuck, this guy's got some some pretty <laughs> awesome music. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like until this day I have it in my playlist and I love his music, you know? Totally. So I think yeah. the problem, what happens here is that people generalize. Uh -huh. People generalize and they put an X or a check mark on someone, and they'll either, and this is what's happened with like politics, right? It's they'll either fall in love with someone, disregarding everything else, and say, this person can never do me wrong, right? Or the opposite way. Trump is an asshole, fuck this guy, no more. You know, like, I don't care what the fuck he did. I don't know, today my trainer said, you've heard of the, what is it? something camp, the the no Trump camp or something like that, cancel Trump camp. I don't know what the fuck he called it, you know? Yeah. And it's like, these are like, you know, diehards, no fucking way. I don't care what the hell this guy does. Even if he like comes down from 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 heavens and says, you know, I'm God. No, yeah. no way. I'm not, you know, it's just like, I don't care what happens. So the second question I want to go into is, well, and again, this is going into the controversial uh, 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 rabbit hole. And sorry, guys, those of you that probably don't want to see this podcast going this way. But I, I promise you, we're always going to bring it back to you and how you can take lessons that yeah. you can implement in day-to-day -day life because we're not talking about these things for the sake of controversy. You know, we're talking about these things to get the lessons. Again, because we can, can put things in containers and learn and take lessons into, you know, how we can draw things into our lives. So I guess the next thing, the next question that I saw in the comments was what do you think of his imprisonment? Obviously, by the way, he's he's been out for a few days now, so. Yeah, man. I mean, that's a tough one in a few different ways. Like, there is, when it comes to Andrew Tate's imprisonment, you know that they have been doing, like, webcam girls, and they've been doing this sort of sex industry business for a long time. He teaches it in his fucking university, how right. to have a sex webcam business. It's his main income source. A lot of people don't know that. He's open about it. And then this, this imprisonment thing was surrounded around that and the girls and like trafficking and stuff. The question is, did they actually do anything or sure. was it one of the ways that they could find a way to bring him and put him inside to try to shut him the fuck up? Cause he's yeah. going against the system. He's going against the norm. I would, it's, it's hard to know 
it's really hard to know because that is a very shady business and world that they're in with that stuff. Right. So it's like, did they do shady shit? It's fucking possible. But I would say the probability of them not doing something that the cops said they did do and that the cops were bringing them in on some sort of, you know, l more of a false imprisonment to try to shut you up and scare you. I think it was more of that. Right. Um, I think that right. there's a much deeper thing going on than, than all of this, which we can touch on in a sec. But I think that the imprisonment was something that is like, oh my God, if they don't keep him in there and he gets free, which he just did, imagine the fucking power he's going to have now. Yeah. So you're talking about Andrew Tate and going to prison. He goes there for a few months. His whole following knows he's still in prison. He's still sending out his daily emails talking about his mindset in the jail. My iron mind in here, I'm doing push-ups every day. Keep working hard. He's still motivating from fucking jail, right? Clearly, he's not writing it. He's got his secretary or using chat GPT or whatever the fuck, but he's still sending out motivation to people. When he gets out of fucking jail, he's just going to point the finger and see, say, see, see, I told you the Matrix was real. They just imprisoned me on nothing. Now I'm out. Buy my shit. I told you it's real. Buy my shit. That's what he's right, going to be yeah. saying now for the next six months. Okay. That's what I think. He's going to spin it in his, in his positive. <clears throat> Interesting. Now, here's the thing that I um, that I want to kind of just spend a couple seconds talking about is, um, again, agree with his message or not, like his message or not. The thing that scares me sometimes is this whole ca cancel culture thing that we have going on. Oh, dude. And that is, it, I think it's... it's um, the problem that I have with it is that just because you don't you don't agree with someone doesn't mean that you should cancel them and you should just kind of remove them and toss them out. You should be able to be responsible for your actions and for what you say. And this is why I want to kind of now take it into this this um, this uh, kind of the next subject, which was another question that we got, and that was, what does it mean to be a leader, right? Because for me, when I think of leadership. I think people always say, oh, well, you have to, you know, you have to have a movement. You have to, um, you know, you have to have a company. You have to, um, you know, you have to, uh, 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 um, like, create something, right? And people have to lead you. You have to influence people. You have to inspire people. You've got to have people follow you in order for you to be a leader. And I say wrong. I say every single human on planet Earth is a leader. You first start with leading yourself because if you can't lead yourself, you can't lead others. And just like Tony Robbins says, he says you should be the leader of your, uh, 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 of your life and not the manager of your circumstance. And I think at the end of the day, I feel like this is what this entire podcast is about, really. It's about helping you guys and giving you tools and giving you skills on how to, do, how to, how to lead your life and how to create your life. How to create the life that you want, not manage whatever circumstance life throws at you, not manage the shit that gets thrown at you, but instead create whatever it is that you want. What are uh, your thoughts about leadership? Dude, preach on that shit all day long. So leadership, it's, it's something that's very close to our heart, you know, because we're leading our family, leading our teams, leading the company, leading our friends. Like you find yourself in a leadership role because leadership is taken. It's not given. Yes. I'll say it again. Leadership is taken. It's not given. You don't become a leader because of a new job title or a corner office or an upgrade on your salary. You become a leader by being the person who is so in tune and grounded with who they are and what they're doing and their mission in life that they bring people along for the journey because they inspire them through what they're doing. Yeah. Right? Inspired leadership, transformational leadership. You're transforming the people around you and you're all moving in one solid direction. That's fucking leadership. It has nothing to do with title. It has nothing to do with where you work, who you work with, what you do. You can be a leader with just you and your wife, just you and your kids. You can be a leader with your entire community. You could be a fucking Elon Musk and lead the entire world. Whatever the fuck it is for you, leadership is taken by you. It's not given. Yeah. Also, with leadership, let's talk about Andrew Tate for one more minute. Andrew okay. Tate and leadership. I was dude, trying to take it away from there, but okay, there fuck. we go. Got, We're back in there. Going, <laughs> this, dude, this is going to get ready to fucking put your seatbelts on for this shit. I think this is going to bring all the controversy that we don't want to talk about into one fucking thing. I'm going to go to politics, right. religion, and Tate 
all at the same time because it's all oh, fucking fuck. interwound. Oh, shit. And I'll, all right. I'll keep it moving. Hopefully I, I, we don't I, get, I think after this, we're going to get canceled. All right, there we, we go. Get canceled, right? If you don't agree, sorry. You fucking, I don't care. I don't agree with you. I don't, I, 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 what's, the, what's the saying? Um, I'm offended that you're offended for taking yeah. offense. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So anyway, uh, okay, real quick. I think Andrew Tate went to jail and is targeted by the puppet masters and the elites because they recognize him as a leader. He mm. is leading the young men of the world, and the young men of the world are those people who bring revolution. Mm. He is leading them. He has them all in the palm of his hand. Yes. I believe that the elite of Hollywood and whatnot tried to get him in to their circle and tried to get him to be the puppet in Hollywood like they do with actors and celebrities, Post Malone, these types of people. And I think he said no. I think he said, Dang fuck her. you. And when he said no, okay. I think he went over to Dubai and different places for tax reasons and whatnot. And he met some sheikhs and some princes in Saudi Arabia. And I think they said, hey, you're one of the top fucking male leaders of the world right now. Why don't you convert the whole fucking world to Muslim? And he said, how much are you going to pay me? Shake. And I think they said a couple billion. And I think he said yes. Because if you have noticed, Andrew Tate went to Dubai, became Muslim, streamed it live, and then he went to jail. And what did he say when he went to jail? I don't need anything as long as I have the Holy Quran. He got out of jail. What did you do every day in jail? I did push-ups and read the Quran. He walked out in a traditional bead necklace. He carried the Quran everywhere he goes now. I don't think he's just becoming a man of God because he, he feels like it one day. Maybe. I could be wrong. I think the Hollywood elite tried to get a hold of him to do that. He said no. I think he went to the Middle East. They had more money, and I think he said yes. Interesting. <laughs> okay. What does it mean for everyone watching? It, it means that, number one, leadership is taken, not fucking given. Okay. He took that shit by creating a persona on the internet, leveraging the affiliate systems and the stuff we talked about a second ago to create a ridiculous tribe of diehard followers. The okay. most diehard followers you've ever seen are like him and Trump supporters, right? <clears throat> Outside of religion. He created that because he's a leader. He attached it to a value system that young men want to assimilate to, right? They want to get lots of women, lots of money, live the high life. Sure. Young American guys, they want that. Okay. He did all that. He created this persona. He became a leader. Okay. And then now he has his choosing who the fuck he wants to assimilate with to help them and leverage his leadership in their world. Is it okay. Hollywood? Is it pop culture? Is it Satanism? Is it Muslim? Is it Christianity? You take your pick, bro. You got the whole world in the palm of your hand. <clears throat> and I think Hollywood said, well, if you're going to say no, then go fuck yourself. You're going to jail for the rest of your life. Epstein Island type shit. Silence you. And now he's out. And that's what I'm saying. Now that he's out, true leadership is going to show through. And I think, I think I might be the only person in the whole world to think this. I don't know. I think he's going to be on a mission to convert people. And I think he's going to pay. Okay. All right. But the thing that I want to come back to is, is like the lesson, the lesson that people can take from this and learn from this, right? Because I mentioned earlier, it's like, regardless what you agree or disagree with, <clears throat> and this is something I've never thought about, to be honest with you. But right. regardless what you agree or disagree with, uh, regardless what's happened to you in life, whether if it's you've made a lot of money, you've lost a lot of money, you've done whatever, there is always a lesson in everything. So it's like yeah. the everyday common man that's watching this, what can they take from what we just talked about and how can they implement that into their life? The lesson you can take away from Andrew Tate becoming a leader creating a movement, going to jail, and now possibly converting people into different fucking religion, the lesson you can take away from that is that he was once a common man. He was a kickboxer with no money. Now he's a multimillionaire with the most leverage out of almost anybody in the world. The lesson here is if he can do that shit, you can do that shit. The lesson here is that's truth that leaders are made by themselves, creating themselves into leaders, it wasn't given to him. Someone didn't just walk up to him and be like, hey, bro, here's a bunch of leverage. He fucking created that. So the lesson is, if he can do it, you can do it. If Bashar can go from immigrant McDonald's, multimillionaire CEO, if he can do it, you can do it. If I can go from drug drinking party animal beach, beach bum to, you know, head of sales for a big company, 
if I can do it, you can do it. Like, it's just that if I can do it, you can do it. That is the lesson of all lessons when you see someone go from zero to hero. For me, that's what I always take away from it. So if someone, say, wants to start something or has started something and they're giving it their all, or at least based on their opinion, they've given you their all, okay. they're going and going and going and it's not working. Is there a time where they need to just cut their losses and move on? Or do they just keep going because it's worked for you and it probably can work for me? Oof, that's a good question, man. I think if you found something that you believe, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're looking to be successful, and you are failing, but you know other people have found success in the thing you're doing, and you feel that that thing you're doing, you can find yourself successful as well if you keep pushing. If you keep pushing boundaries, stretching yourself, meeting new people, implementing better, newer strategies, injecting all of your energy into it, being completely focused. If you truly believe that the thing that you're trying to do can get you there, and you've seen it done before, you just keep fucking going. Full stop. And you will get there. As long as you're giving it your all. Now, 99% of people, I've tried everything. I tried my hardest. No, you fucking didn't. You half-assed it. You weren't focused. You didn't give it all your fucking energy. You didn't extinguish all resources. And then you fucking gave up. Quitters never win. Okay. So what would you say if, if I was to say to you, like, <clears throat> hey, man, like if I came to you, right? I'm like, hey, Bashar, I've been trying Amazon. And, you know, like, I've been trying pretty hard, bro. But, like, I just haven't got there. It's confusing. It's kind of overwhelming, kind of frustrating. Like, I think I'm just going to quit, man. Like, what should I do? I would first look at your steps. What are the steps you're taking to get there? And have someone who has done it look over what you're doing and make sure that you are taking the right steps. I do believe that if it's been done for someone else, you can do it as well. But I also do believe that not everything works for everyone. With that said, I I have a personal kind of story or a personal experience because I had a restaurant and other people have made restaurants work. But I did not see that and I thought if I just keep grinding it out, I would find success eventually and actually had an offer of $200,000 cash. Damn. And I told him to go fuck himself and get the fuck out of my place. Fuck. I should have taken that and ran, bro. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> ran. Ran. Wow. But I did not know when to cut my losses. Yeah. And I think that's the fine line is being able to see when you're not on the right path and you don't have what it takes to get on the right path, cut your losses and move on. If you can see that I'm not on the right path, <clears throat> but have what it takes to get me on the right path by having someone else that knows what they're doing tap into and put me in the right path, then you want to keep going forward. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I totally agree with you. If you're going down a path and you're walking fucking blind, it doesn't matter how hard you work, right? If you're trying to run Amazon store, you're trying to learn how to trade, you're trying to learn how to do real estate, you try to get fit, or you're trying to have a good relationship, it doesn't matter what the fuck you're trying to do. If you're trying to do something and you don't have guidance or a mentor or a coach or steps or a blueprint or a community or something somewhere to tell you the way, you're literally just walking with no map, trying to figure it out as if you're the first fucking human to ever try this thing. You'd have to be a complete fucking jackass idiot to try to think I'm the first person ever in the history of the world to try to do this thing right now and I'm just going to do it alone. And if it doesn't work, then fuck it. You have to go to your mentors and coaches and see what's up so that they can guide you. They can give you a map. And if you yes. have that, you can push through anything. But again, you do need to know where the fine line is. You can go down yes. this path and be on the right path, going the right way and making great money and great having an impact and all sorts of shit. But maybe it's not something you see yourself doing long term. Like restaurants for you, you're like, eh, right? It's like peace. Same with me. I could have run parties the rest of my life. I could have run hotels like... For me, that wasn't that hard, kind of enjoyable, but it, it didn't solve a lot of my problems for me. It didn't give me financial freedom for sure. 
Hospitality pays like shit. <clears throat> it didn't give me time freedom because I always had to be at the hotel every day, all day long. And the fulfillment, it was kind of okay, but nothing that I can compare to the fulfillment I get now working online. Because you get online, you get to cherry pick the people you work with and surround yourself with, which is a right. whole nother bag of worms of just amazing shit that you can do on the internet. Bah. Yeah. Absolutely, man. I 100% agree. And, and you know, you touched on something there where actually we have a, a specific question about it. Uh, uh, and you said you're half-assing everything. And the question is, what are your thoughts about multitasking? By the way, before you answer that, as you guys could see, we're literally just going down and answering questions. We're getting these questions from the comments. Yeah. These are questions that people have dropped in the comments. So if you have questions for us, like if you've been commenting on Instagram, sending me DMs, all that stuff, look, 2.7 million followers, I'm not answering questions in there. It's impossible. But we're here. I have a team that literally goes through and grabs all the questions in the comments, puts them in the sheet for me, and I'm literally going through it and then answering questions right now. That's all we're doing. Yeah. So if you want us to answer your questions, drop them below. And if you haven't subscribed, you're fucking crazy. You need to subscribe. Yeah. Don't you agree? Stop half-assing it and subscribe. <laughs> Stop half-assing. So the question again, what are your thoughts about multitasking? Fucking multitasking, man. I've tried multitasking <laughs> in so many different ways. And for me personally, I found that like the more I multitask, the less shit that gets done. You feel yeah. fucking tired. You feel overwhelmed and stressed out and nothing gets 100% of your attention. Right. <laughs> so if nothing gets 100% of your attention, how can any of those things actually progress as far forward as possible? Yeah. Right? If I'm over here multitasking four separate things in my day and you're sitting at home doing one thing, okay? Who the fuck is going to get further on that one thing? I'm going to mm -hmm. get 25% of the way. You're going to get 100% of the way. Yes. Compound that shit over a year, a decade. You're fucking light years ahead of me on everything, and I'm still kicking dirt back in this back here. None of my things are working. I'm stressed out. I'm overwhelmed, and I don't know why. And the reason is because multitasking doesn't work. You need to fucking focus. That's why. Focus, singular, focus. Absolutely. If you think about multitasking. You know, multitasking for me is like this whole thing of balance, this life-work balance bullshit, bullshit. right? Um, and the reason why I say that is I, I read this thing in this book called The One Thing. Incredible book. If you haven't read it, The One Thing, you need to read it. Uh, the One Thing says that the magic happens in the extremes, and everyone wants magic in their lives, right? And so if you're going to play, play. If you're going to work, work. Huh. Don't try to balance shit, right? No. It's like if I'm going to do this thing, do that. If I'm going to do that thing, do that. I've tried to multitask, and I think multitasking is... It, it sounds sexy, like, oh, I'm doing this thing and I'm doing this thing, you know? And I think also it has to do a lot with this whole notion of the average millionaire has seven streams of income. I have not seen a fucking millionaire that has seven streams of income, right? Everyone builds one fucking stream until it, like, gets to a certain point and then they diversify. Well, but Elon Musk has seven fucking billion dollar companies. Yeah, okay, don't, comp don't look at Elon Musk today. Look at Elon Musk 35 years ago. When he was working his face off to build one fucking company, he sold that company. Then he took his, his fucking earnings and put them in three different companies. And then those companies, you know, started growing into others. So it's the same thing. You only have so much energy. You only have so much bandwidth. You only have so much time. You could either half-ass five different things or you can go fucking full on on one thing and really master that thing because the magic happens in mastery. Yeah. Right? The magic happens in mastery. I like that. That's yes. really good. And you know, while we're talking about Elon Musk, let's fucking go there for a second. People are like, oh, Elon Musk has seven streams of income. Dude, it's fucking Elon Musk. Full stop. It's fucking Elon Musk. You're not Elon Musk, bro. Nah. He's an outlier. Like, he's a fucking outlier. He's flying to Mars. He's got all of the e-vehicles locked down. He's got Solar City. He's got the boring company. He made PayPal. The dude is a proper G. You want to talk about top Gs, it's fucking Elon. You can't compare yourself to the guy. He has seven streams of income. Yeah, he does. And maybe go work on your first million before you start thinking about 50 billion. You know what I mean? That's another thing, man. That drives me nuts when people, like, they start comparing not even apples to oranges, like apples to fucking orchards of oranges. Yeah, but you know, Trump does this well, with yeah, his real estate. 
It's like, See, dude. because what happens is what happens is people try to compare their chapter one to someone else's chapter seventy five, yeah. mm. and, and and I think it's not fair for yourself. It's not. You know, like like someone watching right now, you can't be comparing yourself to me or to you, no. right? That's unfair to you. I've done that to myself. I've looked at people that were like five, ten years ahead of me, and I'm like, well, fuck, how come he could do that and I can't? Like, I remember three, four years ago, bro, I used to do that all the fucking time, and I used to I used to feel worn the fuck out huh. because it was like, regardless how, how strong I showed up, regardless how much I worked every day, it's like this person just seems to, like, move like, like I would take steps... They would fucking take leaps. Like, yeah. they would take, like, it's like a fucking, like a horse, and I'm like a turtle. You know, it's like there was just, there was just no way for me to catch him. But that's also because I was comparing my chapter one to their chapter 25, and that's not fair for yourself either, you know? Dude, it's, it's not fair for yourself. Comparing yourself to others is the biggest fucking trap there is to start with, right? Yeah. So there's two pieces on this. One, if you're comparing yourself to other people, you're completely fucked because you're not living their life. Nothing about you and them is the same. You're not in the same paradigm. You're not even in the same quantum timeline. Nothing is the same except you can Fair. see each other. Yes. Right? Your worldview is different. Your experiences are different. Your contacts are different. Everything is fucking different. You can't compare. The thing that fucks people up is social media, in my opinion. Because in social media, let's say, for example, you're following John. Okay? And you and John, John's slightly ahead of you. He's doing this. And you're like, fuck John. John's doing pretty good. And all of a sudden, you know... You're doing good and you do you do something and then all of a sudden you see Peter over here and Peter is also doing well. Him and John are doing well and you're behind them and you're like, fuck, these guys are doing well. John kind of fucks off for a bit and you don't see him anymore. Peter keeps going and you're like, oh yeah, fucking okay, Peter's still doing this thing. And then, you know, Sally comes along and Sally's way up here and you forget about John and you see Sally. You're like, fuck, well, she's way up there and then you keep doing your thing and then, you know, uh, uh, Steve comes along and so you're always looking at the top echelon of people. Yes. And those people are dropping. Sally had a bad three months. Peter had a bad six months. John completely went away. But you don't notice any of that because you're just looking up. And by the way, you, you what you think is is actually happening because yeah, what you yeah. see on Instagram, no. 79.9% of the time is not even fucking real. Yeah. And stats 100% are 79.9% of the time true. So it's like we're spot on. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's true, man. It's like... You, you can't even go down the rabbit hole of what's on Instagram and shit. You'll see guys in there that are living large, driving Lambos, renting yachts. And then you go and you know their back end of their business. And it's like, okay. But then again, you don't know where they are in their cycle of their business. So it's like, yes. you look at someone's business and you're like, oh, dude, your business. You're like, do my business. Nobody knows what the fuck anybody's doing. This is yeah. why the thing is to focus on yourself and look inward and become your own leader. This is the yes. lesson of the whole podcast. Apparently it's like become your own leader. And then instead of looking at where other people are comparing yourself, look objectively at them, pull the lessons from each of them, where they failed, where they can be improving, learn about it, and then go do it for yourself. And then instead of looking at other people's chapters 25 and you be on chapter one, what you do is you start marking your progress towards your goal and you have milestones and you can break them down and chunk them down over time. And each time you reach a milestone, it can be a daily milestone, a weekly milestone, monthly. Every time you reach one, you tick it off and you feel fucking great because progress equals happiness. Yes. It's that. So you want to learn yeah. from the people, build your own method, and then tick off the progress along the way. That will make you feel fulfilled and happy and you won't be comparing yourself to other people. Love that. Love that. Yeah. All right. Um, here's a question. How many hours... Per day, should I spend working on my new side hustle? 973. <laughs> <laughs> I love this question. Fuck, who, the, who asked that question? Holy I fuck. love that. Well, I, if you're asking that question, you might as well fucking just work at a job and call it good. Yeah. Seriously, not to be a fucking prick, but that I'm, I'm serious. If that's a question for real, if you're watching right now, where's the camera? If you're watching this right now, that was your question. I'm going to give you two things to think about. One, thanks for being here. Great question. All questions are welcome. We love that. But two, bro, you don't want to start putting boxes around your time and your effort to get things done. If you truly have a dream and a vision to free your family of the grind, if you want to retire your parents, retire your spouse, you know, treat people to things with money, and you want to start a side hustle to do it, 
There should be no boundary on how much time you want to spend on that shit. You should be losing fucking sleep over that shit. You should be feeling hungry over that shit. You should be wanting it more than air itself. And when you want something more than air itself, you don't ask how much time you have to spend on it. You say, fuck, I wish I had more time in the day. I don't even have time for this fucking podcast right now. I'm out of here, bro. Like, if you're watching this, fucking get back to work, you know? Like, you got the lesson. Get the fuck back to work. That's my message for you. Yeah. I, um, you know, I have a, a very similar thing. It's like every waking fucking minute, you know? Yeah. If you, if you, like, think about it. You have 24 hours in a day. Say you sleep eight. You know, you're an overachiever. You love sleeping. You want to take care of your health. Great. You work eight. So that's 16, right? There you go. Um, say there is another two or three hours where you are, you know, traveling, you're, you're eating, you're shitting, you're showering, whatever the fuck. Um, the rest four, five, six hours per day, if you take those and you combine those five days a week, that's 20 hours, you could literally, plus the weekend, right? right? Because the thing is also people have this this connotation about weekend. Off the weekend. People think, I heard this one time, one, one time this person said, um, uh, uh, this was like when I first started BJK University. He said, uh, um, I, I asked him, I, um, I was going to get on a one-on-one call with him who was a student. And, uh, and I was like, hey, what are you doing on, on Saturday? Saturday or Sunday or something like that. He's like, oh, I'm going to be resting. I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to be resting. Wow. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Yes. Oh, I'm, I take it off. I'm like, off of work, right? But like you're building this on the side. So no, 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 I don't do anything. I just rest. I'm like, why the fuck is that? He's like, well, God rested. I'm like, <laughs> motherfucker, God created the fucking planet. Jesus. God created the the, 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 the the earth, the sky, the oceans, the fucking plants, the the human. God created everything you see. He had a big and then he rested <laughs> on the fucking seventh day. You're trying to fucking compare yourself to God. I'm like, how many fucking planets have you created over the last week? Dude. You know? Yeah, man. Get your- Get the fuck back to work. Get the fuck back to work. It's what the insane. fuck are you talking about? You what know? the fuck are you talking about? So it's like if you take the, the, the four or five hours you have per week, that's about 20 hours per week plus your weekend, which would be literally the whole fucking thing, day and night, that's probably about a total of 30 to 40 hours. That's about a full another full-time fucking job that you actually have. So when people say that I don't have fucking time, I'm just like, no, you are just uninspired. Uninspired. That's all it is. You are unfucking inspired because if you have, and this is why when people say, "What the fuck is the first thing that I need to do?" I'm like, find your fucking why. Find a strong why that fucking drives you. Because if your why was strong enough, you wouldn't be asking this fucking question. You would be like, "Hey, bro, what else can I fucking do?" Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, it's true, bro. It, it's like. I can look back on my journey when I started online, sitting in Asia, struggling with losing our businesses, losing our companies. And I was like, holy fuck, I need to make something happen. I didn't fucking rest, bro. I pulled all nighters a lot, a lot, multiple times a week. I didn't fucking sleep because I was just, I had too much shit to learn. And I was in the mode of like, Teach me everything and anything and all of it. All right now, let's fucking go. You know, 5,000 Red Bulls later. I did not pause to say, how long do I need to do this? The only time I paused was to call a mentor or a coach and be like, how the fuck can I do this faster? Right. What corners can I cut by learning something from you right now? Here's where I'm at. Here's my next milestone. How the fuck do I get there faster? Because I got nothing but like a long road ahead of me and I need to do more shit faster. Yes. And now the mistake that I made, that if you're at home listening to this, the mistake that I made was trying to multitask in that moment. I thought that if I brought on tons of projects, I could get there faster. The truth is if I just brought on one, I would have got further faster with the one. But I wouldn't have found the thing that I loved and that I'm fucking good at that I can do forever. Because I had to go through lots of iterations and changes and learning moments of like, I don't like that. I suck at this. This doesn't make money. I do like this, but it doesn't make money. I don't like this, but it makes a ton of money. Okay, I'll do that for a minute. Well, I got to find the thing that I can make money at and, and can stay. Oh, found it. Boom. 
So I had to like do that overwhelm at the beginning, but nothing was going to stop me, man. I was like a fucking steamroller, you know? So it has nothing to do with wanting to get more time and sleep and rest on a fucking Saturday. It's like, why the fuck are you doing it? Write that shit giant across your wall. Remember what it feels like not to have it. Imagine what it's going to feel like to have it and then fucking get to work. Yes. Awesome. Two more questions. Um, Got to run. I have a, a flight to catch. Fuck, I'm, I'm, I'm up. By the way, I'm about to fly to, to San Diego. And before I did that, I'm like, going to record a podcast because next week can't fucking record one. Sweet. Won't be in my studio. So got to deliver value to you guys. So look, if you guys are enjoying this, I uh, appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Please drop a fucking comment below. Let us know what questions you have because as you can see, we, you know, we run down. This is going to be a little bit of a shorter one because I got to run, but today we've answered one, two, three, four, five, six, six questions so far. We're going to answer two more. So make sure that you guys drop your questions below. Uh, you know so, what I would love, Bashar? You know what I would yes. love? I would love yes. for them to tell us what they think of Andrew Tate. <laughs> That's what I really, you, really, you really don't want to let that one go. No. I probably shouldn't have brought it up. I want, to see, I want to see what's going on in the comments here. I want to see what the audience thinks of Andrew Tate going to jail. What he thinks about women. I want to see all that shit. I'm interested in okay. people's opinions. Okay. All right. Yeah. So drop it. You heard the man. He wants to fucking, <laughs> he wants to know what you Is he converting the world thing. to Muslim? Is, is, he, is he paid off by the sheik? What do you think? Let me know. All right. Okay. All right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, down the rabbit hole. I said hole. I wasn't going to go through this fucking, down this fucking rabbit hole. God damn it. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on, um, question, what are some tips on how to benefit from today's economy? Ooh, that's a good one. Well, I know that you've been, um, you've been working with, uh, you know, your investment team and stuff. What are some of the things you've learned about the cycles that are going on and things right now and what's coming down the road? Ironically, I have both of these books on my reading stand here for you at home. Grab these books if you want to understand the cycles of the economy and what's going on. Ray Dalio's books, but you know what's interesting? I actually just downloaded that book for the plane. the oh, The changing of the world, uh, world cycle, whatever the fuck it's called. Dude, yeah, the unbelievable. The shit's crazy. Why nations succeed and fail? Yes. Listen to me right now. If you're at home watching this podcast and you're wondering how to get rich, how to make money, how to work from home, how to build an Amazon business, how to free your parents, how to free your wife, how to free yourself from this fucking bullshit slave world that we're all living in. If you're not reading books like this, you don't want it. If you don't know about it, now you fucking do. These are the kind of books you need to be reading and learning yes. so that you can set yourself free. If you're not doing that, you're half-assing it. This is what we're talking about. There's not enough mm. time in the day, bro. Right? You saw the stack of books I just got in today from Amazon. I showed them to you on the meeting. Yeah. Fucking six giant books there. I can't read them that fucking fast. I wish I didn't have to sleep at all, man. Yeah. So, so what have you learned about the economy? Tell me. Yeah, so to answer that question, um, some of the things that I'm doing is, I'm, uh, first of all, I'm building a, um, I'm starting to invest. This is something that I've never done before. So I'm starting to invest, put some money into the market, building a portfolio actually based on uh, Ray Dalio's all-weather portfolio. So took a, a pretty much a strategy out of Tony's book that he learned from Ray Dalio, built a portfolio uh, that way. So taking a certain amount that gets deducted from my account every single month, I don't see it. It just goes into that portfolio to build it. So doing that, doing some investments there, just so that way my money is kind of growing on the side. Yeah. But the other thing is really just um, doubling down on growing the business, right? And 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 what I mean by the business is two businesses, Amazon selling business and uh, 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 BJK University. So Amazon selling business two years ago, I sold my 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 like kind of like my Amazon account, my Amazon brand, and I haven't been an active Amazon seller personally for the last two years. Instead, because I knew that I was interested in the coaching and really teaching people, then I was like, well, fuck, how am I going to do that if I'm not actively selling? Yeah. I can't teach someone something because I try to do it. Six months later, I realized my strategies were outdated because Amazon is just continuously growing. So instead, what I did is. I took our top coach, our top uh, student, I mean, and I invested in his Amazon business. And I said, hey, you're a six-figure a six Amazon business. Here's some cash. Let's take you to a seven-figure Amazon uh, seller, right? And then all his, his learnings, he started teaching to our students. So now we have seven coaches 
in our program, our Amazon mentorship program, and I'm invested in four of their businesses. So I'm now more of an investor than I am a seller, right? They're doing the everyday selling and they're working with our students. So this, this year I'm committing about $600,000 to invest more in those four businesses because I know that Amazon is gonna fucking skyrocket. These four businesses will probably do over $10 million this year alone. So that's one thing. The second thing I'm doubling down, tripling down on BJK University, yeah. you know? Because one thing is, something that people don't realize is that a business will hedge against inflation. Yes. Investments will hedge against inflation, but the thing that hedges against inflation more than anything else is a business. Because even if inflation, exactly, even if inflation is 10% per year, which is, it's never gone that crazy, but even if it's 10% per year, if you can grow your business by 20%, you've already hedged against inflation by double. Yeah. Right? If you're BJK University and fucking increase your business by 10, 10 fucking 10 times, right, overnight, then that's different. With Amazon, for example, we're always looking to at least double our, our last year results, right? So- if you did a hundred thousand dollars last year, you should be doing two hundred thousand dollars this year. Oh. So you've just increased your business by a hundred percent. So even if inflation is ten percent, you are already ninety percent on top of that. So what I would say is, if you don't have a, if you don't have a, a a business, or if you don't have a career, or if you don't have something that you can hedge against, like for example, for you right now, Aaron, it's like you're a partner in BJK University, right? Like. As BJK University increases, you are automatically hedging against inflation because, I mean, I don't know what the fuck it looks like in, in Switzerland or whatever over there in Europe, but it's like you are, um, as the company grows, your income grows, your interest grows, your value, your vested value grows. Yeah. So you are like way over hedged against inflation, right? Mm. But if you're watching at home and you just have a job, and say you're getting maybe two, three percent rates per year, which is what a, a traditional job gets you. That probably isn't the way to do it. You would need to have another vehicle that grows at least ten to twenty percent year over year, so that way you can hedge against inflation. And 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 personally, that's what's going to help you in this economy or any other economy. I love it, dude. I do. This is a massive topic, especially right now with the way the world is. I know a lot of people are scared. I know a lot of people are scared because of the way inflation is and everything is right now with the world. But for me personally, I can just tell you what I'm doing. I know number one is you always want to be investing in yourself. That's the first big investment you need to be making and constantly making it. Always upgrading how much you know, what you know, the mindset you have, the belief patterns you have, you know, doubling down on your health, doubling down on masterminds and communities and groups and networks. All of that shit is the foundation for you to set yourself up financially. As far as financial uh, stuff goes, for me, I want to keep it in things that I can control and things that I understand, right? So much like you, I have an automated account that gets taken off the top of my income every month and it goes into a investment account that's very simple. It follows the S&P 500, it's medium risk and it's just going there and I don't think about it. That's great. That's one little thing. Another thing is we invest in private equity, right? So we invested in Sam Evans with school. So this is considered a higher risk investment, but we double down on it because we use the software ourselves. It's part of the foundation of the company growth that we're doing. And we know the founder directly and we know how successful he's been in his track record and we believe in him. So I invest in those types of things. I uh, invested in my wife's and her brother's Amazon businesses. I helped them fund that so they could get that off the ground. And, um, you know, I, I might buy some Bitcoin here and there, you know, just because fuck it, grab some Bitcoin. That's so right. it's like all of these things over time will create wealth for you, but you're not off just splashing money around in risky areas and things you don't understand. I understand BJK university, this you're talking about getting, um, growing with the company. This is basically sweat equity at the end of the day, right? It's like you're in it to win it from the day one. It's like, yeah, you get some sweat equity there. So if you're sitting at home wondering, how do you get a piece of a company? It's like, go in there and fucking bring value and see what yes. happens after a few years, <laughs> yes. you know, and know the company doesn't owe you shit. They've been paying you. They, they've been treating you well. 
it's a fucking honor to be into that next role. But that's how it rolls in big companies right over time. So investing in yourself, investing in things you can control. If you're involved in any softwares or you use anything, invest in those, right? If you're sitting at home right now and you use Apple shit all over the place, computers, laptops, phones, if you don't have an Apple stock, what the fuck are you thinking, mm -hmm. right? If you're driving a Tesla mm -hmm. and you love Tesla, why the fuck don't you have Tesla stock, right? Right. Going into things that you understand, you use, you know, and you believe in. That's yes. simple investing strategies, you know? Love that. So last couple of questions for the day here, and we'll end it because I got to run. I, I hope I, uh, I don't miss my flight. <laughs> um, it's all good. And I love this question. Do you recommend borrowing money to start a business? Fuck yeah, all day long. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> all fucking day long, man, of course. 99% of people do that shit to get businesses started. The fuck? Yeah. You think people just show up with like half half a billion dollars in their pocket to go build an apartment building downtown Toronto or downtown New York City. Yeah, I'm going to build this giant skyscraper. I just have $27 billion in my pocket. I'm just going to spend it on this shit. Fuck. Yeah. They're going to the bank. They're getting fucking lending. They're, they're, they're making pools and stuff. Absolutely. I would say if you're going to invest in a business for yourself and you're going to borrow money to do it, do it smartly, of course. Make sure you're getting good terms and make sure that you're going into a business that you understand it has a proven track record and you have someone to coach you through it so that you are successful and you can pay that shit back. It's not free money. You know what's interesting is that people will borrow money to buy a house that produces no fucking income. Well, it produces equity. Sure. Okay. We can make that argument all day. Oh. People will borrow money to buy a car that literally depreciates in value the fucking second you drive it off the lot. Yeah. People will borrow money to, oh, you know, to, to, to go buy Gucci and Louis and all this shit and travel and go on vacations and yep. swap their credit cards left and right. Yeah. People will fucking not just borrow money, bend backwards, fucking get co-signers. I mean, just jump off planes to go and get fucking, uh, 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 what do you call it? Um, uh, student loans mm. to hopefully one fucking day get a degree and hopefully one day get a job that's going to pay you 50, 60, $70,000 a year. And maybe, maybe before you retire, it's a fucking six figure job. And you can say that I make six figures after 25 years being yeah. fucking miserable. Right. Mm. And so people will do all these things, but they won't borrow money to start a business. It's like, dude, look at Silicon Valley. Look at, as you said, all these big apartment buildings, big complexes, big shopping centers, big properties, big everything, any real estate that you see in the world, any big business you see in the world, I bet you almost 100%, 99.9% of it started with someone else's money and not the fucking founder's money. The founder maybe, maybe, but in 20, 30%, if that, if that. they probably put a lot less than that, Good. right? It's this whole connotation of don't borrow money. It's like, dude, you already have been doing it since you were a little fucking child. Yeah. You just haven't been doing it for the right reasons. If you are borrowing, let's say, like this is a common question that I get in the community, is like, should I use my credit cards to buy products and sell on Amazon? I'm like, all right, well, let's look at this in a logical kind of way. What is your interest on your credit card? Well, it's anywhere between, you know, depends on what it is, anywhere between 12 to 17, 18, 19%. Okay, cool. How much do you expect to make a return on your investment with an Amazon business? Anywhere between 20 to 30, maybe even 35%. It's like, okay, if I were, say for the first six months, say for the first year, borrow at 15 to make 25, isn't that worth it? <laughs> that's an extra 10%. Well, but I'm paying 15%. Well, no fucking shit. You're use, you're growing a fucking business and making 10% on top with no one's fuck with not none of your fucking money. <laughs> yeah. It's like what's it's like, well, what's the what's the, the what's the other side? Oh, well, I sit and, and wait and save and hopefully in 2 years I can get started. Okay, well, would you rather wait for fucking 2 years or get started today and make 10% as you go? Yeah. Here's the thing about waiting to save to start a business. Wake the fuck up if you're thinking that. Why? Why don't you have the money now then? Because you're fucking spending it, bro. 
humans have a way to spend money to get them down to where they're used to being comfortable. If you're mm. used to being broke and having zero to like anything between like 5K in your bank and under or whatever, consider yourself broke, right? Like that's really broke. Okay. If you don't have that in your bank now and you're saying, yeah, you know, I'm just going to wait a couple of years till I save up five or 10K. It's like, dude, if you don't have it now, you're definitely not going to have it then. You're going to have fucking less because you're going to continue living the same lifestyle. You're going to have the exact same income source you have now. Inflation is going to eat that shit alive. And you're going to lose motivation and inspiration between now and then. You're going to be in a worse position with worse money. Yes. If you don't have it today, you definitely won't have it in two fucking years. Because what yes. got you here won't get you there. What got you here will get you more of where you are now. And it'll be fucking worse. That's why you borrow money or do whatever the fuck it takes to get resourceful to start a goddamn business now. When you're motivated, when you're pumped, when you see a window. When you find something that works and you find people who will help you, you fucking go all in on that shit and you figure that shit out now. Yes. Fuck yes. Hey. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, we will finish and end this one right here. <laughs> I have to run before I think my wife is about to run into this room and be like, let's go, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> it's, about, it's about time. Yeah. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, please share with someone that you believe will benefit from this. Uh, uh, also drop your questions in the comments again guys we literally go through the comments we take questions and we answer them this is literally what we're going to do for the next few episodes if it works if you guys like it we'll keep doing it if not we'll probably switch it up but we created this uh, uh, podcast for you right uh, we created for you we want to add value to you and so our mission is just to add as much value as possible outside of that love you guys thank you all for watching another episode of the impact hour see you guys in the next one take care later